those of you that are here in person and those of you watching us online. Several announcements today. It is a healing Sunday. The first Sunday of each month is a healing Sunday, which means that there will be healers at the two back corners. And after communion, if you want to go over and have a brief healing prayer and a, a little anointing for healing, you are welcome to do that. It's optional, of course, um, but you, you should take advantage of that if you have any need for healing in your life. And we'll also be reading, of course, the names off the prayer list. Um, concert planning tomorrow, 6 p.m. That's a Zoom meeting. We would always invite more people to any of the committees or teams that we talk about here. Uh, and that's true to the first concert is coming up, of course, this coming Saturday, 5.30 to 7. And we have found a, a hot dog wagon who will also be here, a uh, food truck, so that'll be fun. Uh, council was moved to uh, the following Monday, the 15th. This week, uh, Bible study only on Wednesday. I'm going to be taking Tuesday off. It's my wife's birthday, and I'm going to try to treat her right. Men's and women's breakfast uh, also was moved because uh, George's is on vacation uh, on the regular day. So men's and women's breakfast is this coming Wednesday, 8.30 for women at George's, and, and the men will meet at AC's here. Um, tai Chi is 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Quilter's at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. I've mentioned the concert uh, already. Christian Ed Committee is uh, Monday the 15th at 6.30. Am I right about that, Paula? Yes? We'll, we'll get out a, a communique to the Christian Ed folks uh, about that. Uh, Worship and Music Committee, Thursday the 25th at 6 p.m. BBS is coming up for the, uh, August 5 through 9, and we can still use more volunteers for that. It's a fun week, and even if you can't volunteer the whole week, 9 to noon each of the five days, uh, even if you could volunteer for one day to help, that would be a, a big help. The capital campaign is ongoing. Uh, here are the envelopes if you'd like to contribute. We have noticed that some people have put cash in the envelopes and put it in the plate. Now, that's, of course, that's perfectly acceptable, but we won't be able to credit you for that. So if you can... Uh, Somehow let us know who you are when you make a donation. We'll be happy to credit you for that. Um, if you did not know it, the newsletters, which used to be sent out by email, are now to be found on the website. It became costly to send them out on email. So go to the, uh, to the website at the beginning of each month to find the newsletter there. Uh, there will be on the first Saturdays of each month for July, August, and September uh, some vendors set up during the same time as the farmer's market on Saturdays from 10 to 1. And so you can be a vendor or you can come and enjoy what the vendors are selling on the uh, second Saturdays of July, August, and September. Are there other announcements that I've forgotten before we give out the scholarships? And it says that right here too. Yes, indeed. So, uh, so right after uh, worship ends, uh, I'm going to go down to the sharing garden. We'll have it's a very brief blessing, maybe you know four or five minutes, uh, a couple simple prayers. But it's an important thing, I think, and we believe we'll have some representatives here from Tapa, the Torrington area of families with autism, uh, who are using some of the beds too. Yes, thank you for that. Any other announcements? Then I invite the scholarship folks to come up and distribute the money. Good morning. On behalf of the scholarship committee, which comprised, is comprised of G. Ludwig, Mary Magnoli, Heather Miner, Maddie Siss, Val, Valerie Vega, Kathy Winsler, and myself, we would like to congratulate our two recipients this morning and graciously thank the families that made these scholarships possible. I invite the presenters 
to come forward and have a seat in this front pew. If you guys are fine there, if you want to come. Are there other? Okay, so I guess you guys have your work cut out. This year we have two scholarship recipients, and we only had two people who applied. So someone's not, someone who applied is not getting, there's no one else who applied to get a scholarship. So just to clarify that. So I would like to invite May and Freya to please come and you guys can sit right here in the front. Okay, May, you're first. She just completed her associate's degree at Northwestern Connecticut Community College. That's what it used to be called, actually. And what an accomplishment this is for May and her family, as she is the first person in her family to complete a college degree. That's quite an undertaking. continuing her education, pursuing a bachelor's degree from Charter Oak State College, where she will be majoring in social work. May is active here at St. Paul's with the Acapella Choir and many other things. This year, May is being awarded these scholarships. The Edmund and Olga Pfeffer Family Scholarship. Also, the Arthur, Elsie, and Warren Hinchcliffe Scholarship by, that was given by his parents, Arthur and Elsie Hinchcliffe. The St. Paul's Memorial Scholarship began in loving memory of Louise Thede by her family and continues in loving memory of other loved ones by members and friends of St. Paul's. The Eric Pfeffer Memorial Scholarship in loving memory of Eric Pfeffer by his brother, Mr. Arthur Pfeffer. Is that you, Lori? No. The Jean and Brumar, Bruno Arcoma Scholarship in loving memory of Jean and Bruno Arcoma by the Arcoma family. Valerie, as Vice President of the Congregation Council, will present the scholarship to May. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Our next recipient is Freya Harrell. Freya just graduated from Torrington High School, where she was very active in theater, student council, the travel club, National Honor Society, and she was the event coordinator for the Raider Rally. Freya has been equally involved here at St. Paul's as an assisting minister, a member of Puppetude, among other activities. Freya will be attending Binghamton University, where she plans to major in business administration with a minor in theater management. She hopes to plan charity events in her future. Freya will be awarded these scholarships. Ferdinand and Ophelia Pfeffer Memorial Scholarship. Okay, Lori's going, Lori to be. This is for Freya. Oh, did I go over it? I'm sorry. Ferdinand and Ophelia Pfeffer Memorial Scholarship in loving memory of Ferdinand and Ophelia Pfeffer by their children. The Suzanne Sykes Memorial Scholarship in loving memory of Suzanne Sykes, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Allen Sykes. I don't see any in here. The Albert and Lillian Jean Memorial Scholarship in memory of Albert and Lillian Jean, 
by Arthur G. The Frederick Becker Memorial Scholarship in loving memory of Frederick Becker by Mr. Arthur Becker. These are tongue twisters. <laughs> the Charlotte Frost Memorial Scholarship in memory of Charlotte and Robert Frost by family and friends and presenting that scholarship is her great grandson, Mr. Donnie Crossman. St. Paul's Women of the ELCA Scholarship, established to support women within St. Paul's congregation seeking an undergraduate degree from a college or university. And finally, the Tofield Family Memorial Scholarship, established by Ms. Bernice Tofield in honor of her parents and sister, is awarded to Fred. Congratulations, Freya. We wish you all the best. <laughs> okay, for the first time in many years, we also are able to award the Schlott Family Scholarship. This is a four year award in memory of Richard and Marge Schlott and their son, Richard Slot Jr. So this is a scholarship that will go on for four years. So you are the... Let's have a round of applause for these two. <laughs> Thanks also to those friends and family members who make the scholarships happen. Thank you, Scholarship Committee, and congratulations, recipients. Are there children today for a children's sermon? I see a couple. As I said a couple of weeks ago, we're going to use this children's sermons in the summer to talk about some people. Ah, thank you for coming up, uh, who are, uh, we don't usually hear about so much in the Bible or in the sermons or things like that. And I'm going to talk today about a guy who lived about 600 years ago. And this is a picture of him. The, the church has a commemoration, that is to say we remember him, because he was a very brave person who tried to reform the church a hundred years before Martin Luther after which our church is named, the Lutheran Church. This man's name, it's a funny name, his first name is J-A-N, Jan, and his last name is H-U-S, Hus. Jan Hus. Who's heard of John, Jan Hus here? Nobody. Oh, this is, ah! Dixie wins the prize. Give her a scholarship. Jan Hus was, uh, lived in Czechoslovakia. Uh, in, in the uh, early 1400s, and he thought, you know what it would be good to do? I should preach my sermons. He was a pastor. I should preach my sermons in the language my people speak instead of in Latin, because they don't know Latin. Can you imagine if you came into church every Sunday and I stood up here and I preached in a language you'd never heard? If I preached in Russian or, or Portuguese or something like that, you'd say, right? It's important that you hear the sermon in a language you speak, which for us is English. Well, for him, it was Czech, an early version of Czech. And so he got up and he'd preach in Czech. But that was against the law. Can you even imagine? We're celebrating this weekend, 4th of July, because we love our freedom as American people. In those days, there wasn't a lot of freedom for anybody, but especially in the church, there were strong rules. And so Mr. Huss was invited to come to a meeting and explain himself. Didn't go very well. And so poor Mr. Huss, they burned him up. But he was very brave. He was very brave to stand up to people who could do that to him and say, it's not right. It's not right to keep the language, the words of God from the people in their own language. And we stand here today and speak in English because of people like him. So he, he was a hundred years before Martin Luther, and then when Martin Luther came along, our founder, 
he did many of the same things. He preached in German to the Germans, he translated the Bible into German, and he insisted that the church should be open to people like that. Just one little funny fact. In Czech, the word hus means goose. Goose. And so a hundred years later, when Martin Luther came along, some people said of him, Luther is the swan to Huss's goose. Just an interesting tidbit. Thank you for listening to me. Would somebody like a picture? You don't want a picture of Mr. Goose? <laughs> <laughs> it's up here if you decide to change your mind. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to uh, stand now for our opening hymn, 519, Open Your Ears. This is a uh, very uh, Yiddish-sounding tune, and so uh, you'll get into the rhythm quite quickly, I think. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We will be speaking the liturgy through today, and we speak together now the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of Scripture. And Pamela, you can read the psalm as well. Thank you. Good morning. The first re reading is Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. A voice said to me, O son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me this very day. 
The descendants are impotent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether you, they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Holy wisdom, holy word. Okay, so we will say this psalm responsibly. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the hand of their masters, so that your eyes look to you, Lord our God, and to the children's works. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. The second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a message of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, but that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Holy wisdom, holy word. Amen. Would the congregation please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel? Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark in the sixth chapter. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey, no, except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day. From God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus sent out the apostles, the twelve, in pairs. And he says, I want you to take this message. Take it to the villages. Take it everywhere. He can't be everywhere himself. Not while he's still in the flesh. He has this limited venue that he can speak to. But his apostles have a wider place that they can go to. And now, after all these centuries, blessed are we that we also have this same commission. Be very clear about this. This commission is not only for those 12, or only for people that wear collars, or only for you know, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. It's for everybody. This is for the people of God to go out. Why? Because Jesus believes that the words that he speaks and the deeds that he does, that the, the message of God which is he embodies in his own self, that that message is possible, makes it possible for people who are trapped in an old life of decay and of sin and of death to be free to live an entirely new life. That promise is from God and it's for everybody and it should never be constrained or contained in a building or a denomination or in our human hearts, but spread abroad. It's good to go in teams because this is not an easy mission. And the people who bring this message will not always be received. Mr. Huss found that out. The people who bring this message might find themselves shunned or even harmed. They are to leave that place shaking off even the dust from their shoes. But they are not to stop the mission. They're to go to another place and speak the word of grace, mercy, and hope to people who are living in hatred and in fear and in suspicion and in greed and in selfishness. They're living in this old way, this old-fashioned way that everything revolves around me and my needs. Everything revolves around me and the people I think are the special good people of the world. Everything revolves around me and the way that I understand the good things that are for me. That way ultimately leads to a path of emptiness, purposelessness, and death. And Jesus wants you to live. He wants you to know that you were created by God to be in love with your creator and to be in love with all other creatures. He wants you to know that, that your life is a place that's supposed to be filled with joy. It's a place that's supposed to be filled with, with mercy and compassion. It's a place, your life is a place that's supposed to be filled with, with love for neighbor. Even when the time comes, love for enemies. But a life that is wrapped up in the love of God. A life that is generous and simple and peaceful and pure and holy and good. That's how you were created to be. When God creates in Genesis, and God says, oh, that's good. And that good for us. But we stumble. We, we're weak. And, and we're short-sighted. And we forget. We forget. So Jesus comes and he says, let me make it really clear again who you are supposed to be. You are human beings. You are God's final creation. You were molded from the clay of the earth and breathed into by the breath of the Spirit. And now, of course, as Christians, we're also filled with the Spirit that comes at Pentecost. We are a holy people, and we have a holy word for a broken world. We're not going to be sent up exactly, literally, two by two, to every single village and every single house, but you can live your life. You are called, you are called to live your life every single day so that that life-giving message from Jesus is evident to every single person who could possibly receive it. And, and I would say this from my own experience, uh, don't be too frustrated when somebody doesn't respond right away. There's such a thing as planting a seed. I'm a living proof of that. I didn't always walk in the path of my Lord Jesus. But the seed was planted in those early Sunday school classes and from those early pulpits when I was a kid. And so there came a time uh, when I became mature enough to think about these things seriously that it, something started to grow and I became a, 
a different person and I'll dare say a better one. So bring the message. Bring the message. Embrace the life God has given you in all of its richness and abundance and then carry it. Carry it like a gift. Look at everybody and say, you need this gift. This gift is for you. This blessing is for you. This, this promise is yours. God made you good and God made you to know the goodness of God in the world. Embrace it. Embrace it go everywhere far and wide. This is the way that the church becomes a relevant institution, not a religious club. We care about the world and the people in it, and the way we show that care is to bring them the promise and all the grace and love of Christ. Amen. Please stand now for hymn number 574. faith expressed in the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will skip the Lord listen to your children praying today, and we will be praying first for the people on our prayer list. Again, I remind you, if you yourself would like some healing after communion, you can go to the corners of the church. Authorized by Christ to speak and act in his name, we lift our fervent prayers for all in need, especially we pray for those on our prayer list. Kay, Francine, Peggy, Joyce, Phil. Eli, Selma, Sherry, Sharon, Cheryl. Leaf, Emily, Linda, Sigrid, Irene. Judy, Betty, Mark, Jan, Bruce and Liz. Ashley, Rosemary, Joan, Ruth, Jack and Barbara. Kathleen, Shannon, Jake, Irma, Amy Rose. Eunice, Ed, Lynn, Marilyn, Pat. Jason, John, David, Rebecca, Charlotte. Audrey and Ernie, Abigail, Eric, Michael, Richard. Janice, Mike, Gil and Marilyn. Michael, Rich, Kate, Brickett, Bill, Dennis, Karen, Tom, Lee, Oriola and family, Russell, Maria, Barbara, Jack, Jackie, Caroline, Roman, Jonathan, Luis, Judy, Rosemary and Otto, Terry, George, Sigrid, Paul, Jennifer, Deb and John, Julia, Ed. Jen, Jaden, Diane, Steve, and Angel. Lou, Curtis, Steve, Jack, Todd. Robert, Karen, Dee, Midge, and Calvin. Tyler, Eric, Major Zachary, Brandon, Jonathan. Tom, Eric, Peter, Anderson, Dominic, Noah, Christian. For these and any others in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the victims of war, especially the children, those who die, those who lose loved ones, those traumatized by what they have seen, that we may seek to build the world which does not forsake the young. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who sacrifice to gain our independence and liberties, and for all who continue to hold fast to the principles of equality, freedom, justice, and the dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For any needs you now lift in silence or out loud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all these and any other needs, we offer our prayers in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of God's peace. As the peace is beginning to come to a close, we will receive our offering.
speak together, let the vineyards be fruitful. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord. Fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance 
of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And we speak together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Would you please be seated momentarily while we commune the assistance, and then we will invite you forward to receive the elements of the Eucharist. gluten-free wafers, if anyone desires those. Please now, would you come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ?
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the God of all grace fill you with peace and bless you now and forever. Amen. I remind you that right after the trip, those who wish may join us at the sharing garden for a brief blessing. And now our closing hymn in recognition of this weekend celebrations, 888, O oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Thank you. 